Welcome. In a previous video, I went over the process of using a SHA hash checksum on a Mac. I'll put a link in the description to that video. In this video, I'll be doing the same on Windows 10. So right here, I'm on the Raspberry Pi page where you download the Raspberry Pi system. And if you see on this page, it has this SHA-256 hash here. So what this is, is a special code, I guess you could call it, that when you download this large file, you can run an algorithm on it and it should give you this code. If you don't get this code back, it can mean a couple different things. It can mean the download got corrupted or it could mean some third party injected something into that file, probably maliciously. So I've already downloaded this to my downloads folder. It's right here. And I want to know if this is the file I was supposed to download. So I have the SHA hash here. I have the file. What I want to do is open up PowerShell. And I'll go over a couple different ways to do this. So I'll be typing some things in here and I'll put a link to my website down below where you can find the things I'm typing so you don't have to copy it from your screen. So the first program I'm going to use is get file hash. So I'll type get dash file hash and that's one word space dash path space. Now I want the name of the file and you can type it in. The easy way to do it though is just to drag it over to your window like so. I'll hit space. I'll type dash algorithm. And I started typing algorithm and I hit tab twice and it wrote the word out for me. So that's kind of handy. And you can do that a lot on command line systems. Next I'll type SHA, that's S-H-A, and I'll type 256. So on that website, it said SHA 256. You want to use that same number on the end. I'll hit enter here and it will calculate the hash. Okay, so that finished. We have the hash here. And if we go back to the website, we can see it here. Move this out of the way. So if these two match, it means the file matches. I'll pull this down a little bit so we can see the whole thing here. So for day-to-day -day usage, you can probably just check the beginning here. We have FDBD, we have FDBD. At the end here, we have DD61. In high security situations, you'd probably want to check the whole number and make sure it's correct. So since these match up, it means our file downloaded properly. The next technique I'm going to use is cert util. So I'll type cert util space dash hash file space. I'll drag over the file space and then SHA-256. I'll hit enter. Okay, that completed. So cert util has a lowercase version and get file hash has an uppercase version, but it's the same thing. You see we have fdbd and then we have dd61. So the way hashes work is in this file, if even a single character was changed, this hash would be completely different. It wouldn't just be like a two at the end or something. It would be a completely different hash so it's hard to get them mixed up. It's not like one little thing would change in here and you'd have to look through and make sure that one character was the same. So the final method is if you have Windows subsystem for Linux, you can type bash to go to a Linux shell. And then you can type SHA. And then here you want to type 256 and then sum. So if you want to do a different version, you can type that in here. You can say 512 or whatever. Then I'll hit space. I can't drag the file over this time because Linux uses a different file path system, but I can type forward slash MNT forward slash C, and you can see that over here in the path, and then forward slash users forward slash, and then your username, then forward slash. So we got this far here, and now we need to go downloads in the name of the file. So to do that, I'll just type DOW and I'll hit tab, and that will auto complete downloads. And then the file name starts with 2020. So I'll just type 2020, I'll hit tab, and that will complete that. Then I'll hit enter. Okay, so that completed, and you can see it's similar to one above, FDBD, DD61. So that's three different ways you can calculate a hash on Windows 10. So I'm on the latest version of Windows 10. Uh, some of these might work on older versions of Windows 10 or even older versions of Windows. Of course, like Windows Subsystem for Linux is only on Windows 10. But if you come from a Linux background, then using the Windows Subsystem for Linux might be the one you want to use because you're used to doing the same on a Linux system. So where this could be useful is if you had a large file you needed to send to someone, you could upload that to a web server and they could download it from the web server and it may not be encrypted when they do that. Well, you could send them the hash and they could check the hash to make sure that a third party hasn't manipulated that before it was downloaded on their computer. So that's all for this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.